Welcome to part four, everybody, and today we're going to be going over the kinematic equations of golf ball flight. So kinematics, as my physics one professor used to say, is really just applied calculus. But it's the study of the position of idealized objects using Newton's basic equations, in which the quantities we're interested in are, are acceleration, velocity, and position, which I'll just call r. So in general, these are all vector quantities, and then we relate all of them by derivatives. So we say that acceleration is the first derivative of velocity, which is in turn the first derivative of position. In other words, acceleration is the second derivative of position. So we just have that basic relationship derivatives with respect to time to move between the quantities. And to apply this to a physical system, what we need is Newton's second law, where we say that the sum of forces in a particular direction, so we'll say a component i, is equal to the mass of that particle times its acceleration in that direction. So we essentially get three directions for each of the i components, and we have, therefore, three equations of this form. So these would be those three equations. We have the component of force in the x direction, in the y direction, and the z direction, if we choose Cartesian coordinates, being re directly related to the acceleration in each of those three directions. So what's left to do is find the sum of the forces in any of these three directions, and for that we can draw a free body diagram. So if we want to orient our space, so let's say we're launching the golf ball in this direction, so that we have x here, and z here, and we'll not really concern ourselves with the y motion at this point. So let's say we have a golf ball sitting out at some point in time right there. And this was the direction in which it was launched. But if we want to look at the forces, the only force acting on the ball at this point in time is going to be the downward force of gravity. So we'll say F for gravity, which is acting down. So how do we write that? We say force of gravity is just minus mg. So it's the downward force times the this constant g, which is specific to the planet or object you're on. So for Earth, we have a value for that g, and we just say it's going to be in the z direction. So we denote that by z with a little hat, negative to indicate that it's pointing downward. And that's what we have. There's nothing else acting on the ball to first approximation. We could consider drag and wind, which we'll do in coming videos, but this is going to be our starting point. So what that means is that the sum of the forces in the z direction is going to be minus mg z hat. And this is related to m times the acceleration in the z direction. Now the mass in this case is both the mass of the golf ball so we can cancel it. And we say that the acceleration in the z direction is just minus g, of course, times z hat, which would be somewhat redundant to write in this point. So we'll just leave it like that. And that's it. And from there, we use those derivative relationships to find, therefore, the velocity in the z direction, or up and down, as well as the position as functions of time. So based on this derivative relationship, we can effectively say that the differential velocity in the z direction is equal to az times a little time step dt, which of course would be minus g times a little time step. And we get rid of the differential operators by integrating, which is just summing over the dt. So if we do that, we'll get Vz is equal to minus G times T plus a constant. And what the constant will be will simply be the initial velocity, which we could say 0, or I'll just use I for initial, in the Z direction. So this will be the first constant we'll have to specify. And this is exactly a component of that initial velocity that we were talking about in the previous videos. 
So now that we have this velocity in the z direction as a function of time, we could find the position, which I will just call z itself. So the z coordinate can be found similar to our previous calculation as simply the integral of the v velocity with respect to time. So we just integrate this above expression and we'll find that z is going to be equal to minus one-half g t squared. So that's how you integrate over time here. You increase the exponent by one from one to two and then you divide by that exponent so you get the one-half and then the constant negative g just carries through. Since this was a constant in time, we just bring it down, multiplied by time, and then we have one more constant of integration, which was called zi. So that's the initial z, or the initial height of the ball. And that's exactly what we would expect. Since we were solving a second order differential equation, there's two initial conditions we need to satisfy. The initial velocity in the z direction, and the initial position in the z direction. So these are both things we'll have to specify in order to get this position equation fully defined. But that's it. So let's look at the other two directions. So the y direction is even easier because there's no forces acting. Nothing is pushing the ball side to side. This is where wind will come in later, for example. But other than that, there's nothing to accelerate the ball sideways. Acceleration is zero. What that means is that the y velocity is a function of time is going to be just a constant. It's going to be whatever it starts out as. There's no forces that could change it. If we then integrate that, the y position is a function of time. It's just going to be that initial constant times t plus another constant, y0, which is the initial position in the y direction. So those are the two constants again we need to specify and we could follow exactly the same argument saying the sum of forces in the x direction is zero to find the x position equation. So it's exactly the same if we just swapped out the variable x for y. So the last thing we do before we plug this into the computer, for example, is just to define our constants. It would be useful to say that x0, y0, and z0 are just all themselves zero. We just define our initial starting position as zero. That means whatever we end up at, higher or lower than that, is all relative to wherever initial position we're at. So that simplifies it a little bit. The other thing we're going to say is that the velocity in the y direction is just going to be zero initially. We're just going to say that we're hitting the ball straight, at least initially. So what that means is the only thing that we have to define is again this initial angle. So this was uh, x, the vertical we said was z, and then the angle we're making is theta with respect to those things. So what we actually measure or could calculate would be this initial velocity, which is the total velocity oriented in that direction. So what that means is we'll use our right triangle rules to find what it is in the x and z directions. So based on that, the initial velocity in the x direction would be this side of the triangle. That would be this vector here. It's just going to be the initial velocity total times the cosine of that angle that we find. And the vertical part, which would be this arrow, is how fast it's traveling in the z direction. So v initial z is the total v initial times the sine of that angle. So that's just some basic right triangle trig. So this is all we need to plug all this into the computer. Okay, so welcome into MATLAB here. The first thing I did in my little script I wrote was to define g as 10.72, and that's it in units of yards per second squared, since we're going to be measuring distance in yards. I defined the x and z positions initially to be zero, and I said we had a launch angle, or a launch speed rather, of, of about 100, degree, 100 miles per hour. And you can convert that into yards per second by multiplying by this factor. So it's about a half uh, to convert. And we'll start with a launch angle of pi over 4, which in radians 
uh, would correspond to 45 degrees in more familiar units. Then we take the initial x velocity to be that initial velocity from above, multiplied by the cosine of our launch angle, and for the z direction, the sine of that angle. Then here we have this for loop, which will plot for a 10 second duration at 0.1 second time steps, the x and z position along two axes. So x is just going to be x0, the initial position, which is just 0, plus its, position, uh, its velocity in the x direction times time. And we have the same term for z, except we subtract this gravity term. So that negative acceleration, minus 1 half gt squared. And this is just the axis we're going to do from 0 to 250 in the x, and then from 0 to 100 in z. So that should give us enough. So let's run this, see what we get. So we're on the right, you see we're getting these circles, which represent the golf ball at different points in time. So you see this is its maximal height, somewhere around 55 yards, and it goes out to a distance somewhere, I'd say, maybe 220. And then we can go in here and change the launch angle, for example. So let's make it higher. So that would be pi over 3, for example, would be a 60 degrees launch angle. So at the same speed, we expect it to do something like this, to reach a higher height, up above 80 yards, but it's going to come down here shorter, short of 200 yards now. And then another fun thing to do is to go and change the launch angle now to pi over 6, which would be a 30 degrees. And we see it's going to go much shorter in terms of height, but land the same distance out in the x direction. And that's actually a pattern you'll see is if the two angles here add up to 90, they'll both travel the same distance. So here, 30 degrees and 60 degrees add up to 90, so they both would go the same distance. Let's say maybe at 190 yards. You'll also notice all of these trajectories are symmetric parabolas, so it goes up, reaches the max height, and comes down, so the max height's right in the middle of the path. That's not going to be true in our next video when we look at the next level of complication we could add, air resistance, or drag. So that will cause it to actually slow down once it reaches max height and fall even shorter, hit the ground sooner. So we'll see you next time.